Okay, today we're going to begin um, by talking about air resistance. Or more specifically, moving through a resistive medium. So we'll begin with our easiest case and we'll move from there. So let's say we have a ball of mass M and we drop it and as it falls it's going to experience a resistive force of F equals negative, we'll say KV. So <clears throat> usually the things that we need to do with this are draw a free body diagram. So the resistive force, obviously, and then gravity pulling down. So we know the acceleration is going to be down. The next thing that we do, Newton's second law, sum of my forces equals the mass times the acceleration. And that's going to equal mg minus this resistive force. Now, just as a note, looking at this, as we start, when time equals zero, our initial velocity is zero. So the initial resistive force is going to be zero. As time goes on, and we'll pretend that we're going to fall for an infinite amount of time, we reach some final velocity. And it's at this point when we release some, when we meet this um, constant velocity, it's at that point that the acceleration is now zero. And I can say that gravity is equal to the resistive force, kV. And so the terminal velocity is going to be mg over k. So that's terminal, terminal. When we talk about terminal velocity, we mean that time when our acceleration has gone to zero. Terminal velocity only happens when we have two opposing forces. Otherwise, and we'll talk about that in the next slide, so we'll just get to the exception to that. So, the hard part of this is finding velocity as a function of time. So to do that, we need to take Newton's second law and turn it into a differential equation using the relationship that acceleration is the first derivative of velocity. So mass times dv over dt is equal to mg minus kv. And we separate our variables, meaning we're going to take dv and divide it by this whole thing. It's a function of velocity, mg minus kv. And we set that equal to dt over n. So this is our differential equation. It's an equation with differentials in it. Here we've separated the variables and we're going to take the integral of each side. Now when we do this on the AP test, it's very important that we have the correct limits. In this case, we started off when time was zero and we're going to time t. The important one is figuring out what our velocity is when time is equal to zero. The problem's going to tell you that every single time. And in this case, when we're dropping something in air and letting air resistance take over, it's starting with a velocity of zero and going to a velocity of v at some later time. The reason that we're not going to say it's going to terminal velocity is because we're trying to find the velocity as a function of time between when we start and when we hit this terminal velocity when time is infinity. So taking this derivative, we get the natural log of the whole function underneath mg minus kv, and, and according to our, our rules of, of taking integrals, um, we have to divide by the derivative of the inside of this thing, which is just negative k. We have to, at some point, apply our limits. It's going from 0 to v, and that's equal to, after we get done over here, just t over n. So, Again, more math stuff. When we apply our, we're going to move this over first. When we apply our limits, it's the natural log of mg minus kv minus the natural log of 
mg when we plug in zero. What that reduces to is mg minus kv over mg. Since we've already moved this over, it's equal to negative kt over m. At this point, we, we need to get rid of the natural law because we're looking for velocity as a function of time. So we raise, we make each side um, what we raise e to e to. So we have mg minus kv over mg is equal to e to the negative kt over m. Once we solve for v, we've got mg over k times 1 minus e to the negative kt over m. This is my velocity as a function of time. It fits with what we said about the terminal velocity before, so that when time is equal to infinity, negative kt over m, this, is, this becomes 1, e to the negative infinity, I'm sorry, yeah, e to the negative infinity, is zero, so this whole thing becomes one, and I got velocity is equal to mg over k. And it fits with what we said before. At time equals zero, this term becomes one, so one minus one, zero, my velocity is equal to zero. This fits what we said. Go air resistance. Now, the next case is when we have something with some initial velocity, let's say it's a car, this is going to be a dumb looking car. It's moving with initial velocity v0 against some resistive force that's, again, we'll just say negative kv. <clears throat> when we draw a free body diagram of this, we've got weight down, normal force up, and then this resistive force, negative kv, moving backwards on our object and it has an initial velocity forward. And there's nothing else acting on it, so there will not be any terminal velocity as such. The car stops, so technically our terminal velocity should equal zero in this case. When the acceleration is zero, um, V has to be zero. So if we look at Newton's sum of my forces equals mass times acceleration and that's equal to negative kv. The reason this negative sign has to stay there is because my velocity will always be in the opposite direction of my acceleration. So we have to have a negative sign there. So we're going to do the same thing we did before. Write this as a differential equation. m dv over dt is equal to negative kv. Separate our negative kv. Separate our variables, um, dv over v is equal to um, negative k dt over n. We're going to take the integral of both sides. Again, on the time side, we're going from 0 to time t. And on the velocity side, when time is 0, we have an initial velocity of v0 and we're going to some later velocity. It is always tempting for you as students to put the final velocity as zero for our final um, limit on our integral, but we're not integrating all the way until the end. We're going into some time in between. That's why we're looking at velocity as a function of time. So you cannot put your final limit as zero. It has to be v. Pretty much every time it has to be v. So we get the natural log, and when we apply our limits, that's the natural log of v over v0 is equal to negative kt over n. We, we raise each side, we e both sides. So we get v over v0 is equal to e to the negative kt over n. And then we see easily that v is a function of time, is v0 times e to the negative kt over n. The unfortunate part about force as a function of velocity is that it's going to come back up 
in um, in the E&M section of the test, especially when we start talking about emotional EMF. But again, once you get to the point where you can write out all the forces acting on an object, and it looks like this, these are the basic steps that you're going to follow.